several sectors that are interested in this information, especially right now as we're you know moving into the spring season and frost and freeze is kind of on people's radar. So agriculture and horticulture communities are interested in frost and freeze because it determines um, what types of crops they can plant and how sensitive their plants may be to um, frost and freeze events, especially after the growing season starts. Um, even in the, com in the construction community, frost and freeze impacts foundation depth and may also cause foundation heave. And the same goes for the transportation industry, that these frost and freeze events, especially if they occur rapidly together where you have a big warm-up followed immediately by a freeze, that creates potholes in the roads that we find in inopportune times. So these are just you know, three examples of why frost and freeze matters to the user community. And as we go along this workshop and, and dialogue with you as the users, we look forward to hearing more about how frost and freeze is actually impacting your applications and your decision making. So since we are talking about frost and freeze, I just wanted to throw this slide up there to kind of talk about, you know, what are we really talking about? What's the definition of frost and freeze? Um, these are two definitions that I found on the National Weather Service webpage in their glossary. And um, so in general, frost is talking about um, the conditions very similar to dew that happens in the spring and summertime, only this is where temperatures are right at near freezing, and so the frost is actually freezing on surfaces. But when we talk about freezing temperatures, we're talking about temperatures hitting the 32 degree mark and for an extended period of time over a wide area. And that can mean different things to different people because, you know, a freeze happens at 32 degrees, but then people start talking about a hard freeze at about 28 degrees, and then um, chilling freezes getting down to about 24 degrees. And so what does that mean? How many hours does the temperature have to stay at, at or near those conditions before it really starts to impact plants or start you know, creating problems for the construction industry. So those are the kinds of things that we look forward to us as climatologists sharing the frost and freeze information that we have, but really what is that impact to you as, as the user in your decision making. So here's an example of some of the frost and freeze products that you're going to hear about during the workshop. Um, our sister agency, the National Weather Service, is the agency that um, provides the frost and freeze advisories and the watches and warnings. Um, the National Weather Service is online with us, so if you do have any questions specifically about their products, um, we can get those answered by those folks. But we also here at NCDC do archive the advisories and watches and warnings. So if as a user you ever need to go back in history and look and see what some of those are, we do have those available in our archive. So here at the National Climatic Data Center, as I mentioned, um, supplemental normals is where you'll typically find our frost and freeze data, and Anthony's going to be giving a presentation on that. And then the frost, the air freezing index is another product that Rocky is going to talk about, and I know we're going to hear another presentation tomorrow as well about some additional research development going on with the air freezing index. We also have several NOAA partners that also have their own products. Um, and again, you're going to hear about many of those today. For example, Alan Curtis is going to talk about um, the products provided by the Midwest Regional Climate Center, um, our partners with RINCI and NEMAC, KICS and ERT are also going to give presentations um, on some of the research going on when it comes to frost and freeze information. So what does this mean when it comes to engaging with our users? Um, Frost and Freeze is just one of the many products that we have available here at NCDC and that's accessible on our website. So the image you see here is an image of our website and, that, and that's a list of the most popular products. And um, so as we provide this information out to the public, we're, we're trying to get an even better understanding of how that information is being used by the business community because that information can then also be fed back into product development. So does terminology make a difference? Does spatial resolution make a difference? Um, so it is a continuous dialogue. It's not just about us pushing out data. It's also hearing and learning more about how that information is actually impacting you as a decision maker. What additional information may also be beneficial that you didn't know existed. So that dialogue is very important. As Tim mentioned, we serve a wide variety of customers. Um, from a customer service um, branch standpoint, oftentimes when we receive um, 
requests from users for information, we often don't get really into the dialogue about how that information is being used. And so at NCDC, we recognize that that information is very valuable because not only does it help us service you as a user by providing you additional information that we have that may be useful for your application, but it helps us answer questions about how is this information being used, what other data sets are enabling your decision making, and what, climate, what additional climate information do you need? Is there something else that we can be providing that you didn't know existed? Or is there ways that we can kind of tweak our product to be more useful um, to you as the user? Tim also mentioned that we have a sectoral engagement program. And this was developed about uh, four years ago as a way to be more proactive with our users. These are the 12 sectors that we are currently actively engaging with. We have a team lead associated with each of these. As you can see, these are very broad sectors. For example, for example agriculture includes forestry, and it includes you know, all of the aspects of agriculture, like crops and livestock. Um, we see civil, infra civil infrastructure is also mentioned here, and that's where we have our construction activities listed. Um, and transportation, as we were also wanting to focus on in this workshop, um, covers rail, road, water, et cetera. Here's the matrix. Um, you know, the previous question was kind of asking what time scales are we looking at here and, and what products do we have available. This matrix gives you an idea of the, the various um, time scales as well as spatial scales and some of the products that fit within those scales and who are some of the, the users of those products. And I'm sure even in this matrix you can find yourself in here somewhere. Tammy, I have a question. Yes, Tammy. Since I'm looking at this chart, the top text talks about the products that we have. So Drought Outlook, Heat Wave Prediction, Hurricane Track, Drought Monitor, and Monthly right. Phase of Climate Report. Those are all examples of products that are okay. available at NCDC. And those can be accessed through the NCDC website. Yes. Okay. And then some of the in the blue boxes are who we recognize as some of the users of those particular products. Yes. So as we were talking about engagement and how we're wanting to hear from you as the user, this workshop is just one of those ways that we're doing that. Um, so as I mentioned um, in the introduction, this is a series of workshops. And so we do anticipate holding more of these in the future as well. So please you know, be on the lookout for those announcements. But the, the, the goals of these workshops are to advance the literacy of climate data and products for the private sector and increase the, user's under, the understanding of users' needs for climate information. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to discuss example case studies of decision support tools and their applications. And it also gives us an opportunity to talk about what are some of the barriers and challenges faced by the private sector and professional associations in using this information. Another example of how we're engaging with our users is an upcoming forum called the Executive Forum on Business and Climate. And this one is going to be held here in Asheville on June 3rd through the 6th. So I'll also be looking for an announcement on that. And this is um, it's more of an extension of what you're going to hear from today, where we actually get into case studies um, and, and further that dialogue. Um, so Jenny will be taking the lead, and so you'll be hearing a little bit more of that, too, in the future. So from an engagement standpoint and here at NCDC, we recognize that um, there is a user demand for this information, and we are interested in, in, in the science that we do. How can we have more of a user-driven focus on that science? We also um, see the greater emphasis on the applications of that data how users are using that information and why it's important to them. And we recognize that we do need to you know, further that development of, of engagement um, and connecting with the users. It's not just about us handing out data, but also we need to um, continue to expand our understanding of, of how and why that information is important to you. There are also several opportunities for partnerships across the public, private, and academic enterprises. And so again, you know, you'll hear from some of those partnerships throughout this workshop. And we also continue to look for opportunities to interact and participate 
not just in workshops that we hold, but also um, workshops and conferences within the sector so that we can sit at your table, hear your vocabulary, and hear what your needs are. 